This is a lesson on the logarithmic function. Up to now, everything has been on the exponential function. But as you'll see today, that there is a very close relationship, an important relationship, between the logarithmic and the exponential function. So to begin our exploration of the logarithmic function, let's begin, let's start with um, a regular looking exponential graph. f at x is equal to b to the x. Now that we don't know what the base is, but it will be a number bigger than 1 so that I get a an increasing function like that. So that's your pretty standard exponential graph. What I'm going to do next is reflect this in the y equal x line. You will remember, I hope, that that creates the inverse of the original, finding the inverse of y equal b to the x. As well, we are switching all the x and y coordinates. That was, that's what the inverse does. And if we take a look at our graph now, y equal b to the x in black, increasing, and we get this new graph, x equal b to the y. All I did was switch x and y. And this x equal b to the y curve that I've got is known as the logarithmic function. So that's new. And this is written as the logarithm, or red, excuse me, the logarithm of x to the base b. That's the logarithmic function. So we could summarize this by stating that y equal log x base b is the inverse of y is equal to b to the x. So that's always true. The logarithmic function is the inverse of the exponential function. That's the re uh, relationship. And the same restrictions apply. b, the base, has to be greater than 0. No negative bases or even 0 for a base. It cannot be equal to 1. Now, if you were to compare some of the characteristics of the two graphs, up, I've got y is equal to b to the x in black. And as you know, the domain of this graph does not have any restrictions. So the domain is all real numbers for the exponential function. The range, though, does have a restriction in that y has to be greater than 0, but otherwise all real numbers. Remember, the x-axis is a horizontal asymptote. So when we, are, we, are, we compare that to the logarithmic function, y is equal to the log of x base b. Now you have to get used to dealing with this. In the today's lesson particularly, we're just, I'm just going to be drilling that in. And after a while, you, you're totally comfortable with it. But um, anyways, with y is equal to the log of x base b, the domain, well, when you're dealing with inverse functions, you switch domain and range, right? x becomes y. So the domain is going to be x is greater than 0, but all real numbers. And we can tell that by inspection of the graph, right? It just The y-axis is a vertical asymptote. And then the same thing is true with the range. The range, you can tell by inspection probably that it's going to be all real numbers. Now this graph is rising. It's really tailing off, but it is going up forever too, just sort of at a slow rate. But that's totally consistent with what we know about inverse functions. Now another observation we can make, if you just compared the two like that, y equal b to the x, the exponential function, y is equal to the log of x base b, the y-intercept of the exponential function is 0, 1. Unless we've transformed it, it'll always be like that. And then, naturally, the x-intercept of the logarithmic function is 1, 0. We switch the coordinates of it. So that's an important observation, because when we start transforming the logarithmic graph, we, we really want to be aware of where that x-intercept is. Now let's sketch the following logarithmic functions. There is a problem with logarithmic graphs in that your calculator is programmed for base 10. 
and we will look at the graphing of them on the calculator in a quite a bit of detail later on but um, for the time being we cannot use our calculator so we have to know what we're doing so if we want to sketch y is equal to the log of x base 2 there's one method that a lot of people use when they're sketching them they always start with the exponential function so if you're graphing y is equal to the log x base 2 you begin by sketching the related exponential function y is equal to 2 to the x same base but in this case 2 to the x and there's our graph pretty standard looking thing and once you get the exponential graph drawn all you need to do is reflect that graph in the y equal x line that is find the inverse of it and it that will give you a graph like this. The graph in blue now represents the logarithmic graph, and you've done it. So you can really quickly sketch these ones by starting with the exponential function. The second method, though, re requires you just to know what a logarithmic graph looks like. After a while, you know, they've got that x-intercept of 1. They all look basically the same, so you leave out the exponential part of it, and you just go directly to this stage x-intercept of 1 and sort of an increasing graph starting at the y-axis. When you're drawing these by hand it is totally unnecessary to do a great job of it. You just have to sketch it roughly. Let's try another one. This time we have a fractional base. So the base is between 0 and 1. Now we know from experience that the exponential graph will be decreasing. So here is the corresponding exponential function with the same base y is equal to 1 third to the x. Note that it's got its y-intercept of 1, but it is decreasing as you ride it from left to right. Now, if you were to gra reflect this graph in the line y equal x, it's not quite as easy as the increasing ones, but this is what we would get. Notice that if you tilted your head and compared the red and the black graphs, they are perfectly perfect mirror images over the y equal x line and the graph in red is your logarithmic function. So you can look at it on its own and you get this. Now what's interesting about this graph with the base of one-third, the logarithmic graph with the base of one-third, is that it is a decreasing function. So just like the exponential one with the same base, we get a decreasing graph. So see this one is, is, is sinking as you go from left to right. Now this brings up sort of a generalization on these graphs. If you're dealing with any logarithmic graph, log x base b, if the base is greater than 1, we get an increasing function. And that will always be true. And in general, those increasing functions are going to look like this. Now it's true that the exact base value, the value of the base, will change the steepness of it, but they're all going to start with that x-intercept of 1 and then be increasing. You see, as you go to the right, as x increases, y is also increasing. And then if you compare that to if the base is between 0 and 1, remember it can't be equal to 1, and it has to be greater than 0, that would be a decreasing function. And that's going to look like what we just dra uh, graphed, decreasing like that. So when you graph these enough, you get a fairly good sense of what they look like, even without a calculator. Now, um, let's compare a couple of logarithmic graphs. This one is the log of x base 2, and compare that to the log of x base 8. Because their bases are different, really the question is, what is the effect of changing the base, or increasing the base from 2 to 8? And the answer might surprise a few of you. So I'm going to begin by comparing the related exponential functions with base 2 and base 8. We can use our calculator, plus we already have a pretty good sense of what's happening. So the graph in black is 2 to the x. The graph in blue is 8 to the exponent of x. And as I hope you know, the larger the base with exponential graph, as long as it's greater than 1, the steeper is the curve. Also, the more it's going to hug the y-axis, the closer it will be to the y-axis. So what I'll do next is reflect both these exponential functions in the line y equal x, because we want to see what's going on with the inverse of those graphs. So here we have it. 
The graph in black is the inverse of 2 to the x, so that's the log of x base 2. The graph in blue is the inverse of the exponential function y is equal to 8 to the x. So what's interesting is, with respect to the base, there's not a big observation we can make with this, but um, we can see that this one, is base increases, the function is closer to the x-axis. So it's a little flatter. So it's exact opposite to what you get for exponential functions. So those are some of the basic characteristics of the logarithmic function. We'll get into a few transformations of them. Nothing new with transformations, but just make sure that we can handle the basics. And following that, we deal more with algebra than we do with the graphing. But this is important information. You do get tested on it, so you have to understand the relationship between logs and uh, exponents. Thank you for your time.